I'm sure you've heard of the term before, jet black. It sounds cool, it sounds sleek, maybe it makes you think of a stealth airplane or an inky dark night sky, but surprise! The term comes from a gemstone called, of course, jet. Ranging in color from black all the way to very dark brown, jet is found all over the world, including France, Germany, Russia, Spain, and the United States but it has a very long and unique history in England. Jet is a type of lignite coal. That's right, coal. Chemically, jet is predominantly carbon, but it also contains hydrogen, oxygen, and other elements. Like coal, jet was formed from the remains of ancient trees, altered by compression and heat over millions of years. And when rubbed, it emits a distinct, noticeable odor of coal. So coal and jet are basically formed the same way, look similar, and even smell similar. So what's the big difference? Why is one used for ornamentation and jewelry and the other used for fuel? Coal forms in a seam. That's where an ancient swampland full of wood is buried. This buried woody material biodegrades and reacts to heat and pressure over millions of years. Then what happens? Ta-da, you get a coal seam. But jet isn't formed in seams. Rather than entire forests or swamps succumbing to heat, pressure, and time, jet forms when an individual piece of organic material, say a single tree, falls into a body of water. It eventually sinks to the bottom and is then covered by sediment and goes through a multi-million year heat and pressure process. In fact, if you use powerful microscopes, you can actually see preserved plant cells in jet. Because of the interactions with minerals in the water, jet is similar, but not identical to coal. Jet doesn't form fractures or cleat like coal. Coal is friable, which means it crumbles really easily. This means jet is much tougher and more uniform than coal. In a way, it's a harder form of coal that comes from fossilized conifers from 180 million years ago. And because there are different kinds of water, fresh water and salt water, that also means there are two different types of jet, soft and hard. Soft jet forms in fresh water, while hard jet forms in salt water. But hard or soft, jet is relatively easy to carve, though minute detail work is very difficult. It takes a very skilled lapidary, an artisan who fashions minerals and gemstones, to create such objects with fine detail. Coal is found all over the world, but the conditions for creating jet are, as you may have guessed, much narrower. For centuries and centuries, the most important source for it worldwide has been in Whitby, a seaside town in Yorkshire, England. Most specimens from Whitby are classified as hard jet. Millions of years ago, the incredibly named monkey puzzle trees fell into the salt water along the northern coast of England. Jet has been used for ornamental purposes in Britain for thousands of years. There are examples of jet belt sliders from the late Neolithic era, about 6,000 years ago. Jet beads have been found in burial sites dating back to the Bronze Age. And during the Roman occupation of Britain, jet was manufactured into jewelry and sold and traded throughout Europe. Roman associations with jet were sometimes even magical. It was used in protective amulets or talismans. But throughout the centuries, those magical associations faded. If you're interested in the fashion and social rules of the Victorian era, you may have already heard of Whitby Jet. In the 19th century, a large amount was mined in and around the coastal city. It was used for jewelry, but a very particular kind of jewelry. In the 1800s, when a close loved one died, the survivors were expected to enter a mourning period that was often ritualized and very public. Widows especially were expected to wear all black for a set period of time. Even the paper they wrote their letters on was lined in black. Whitby Jet was often used as mourning jewelry. And Queen Victoria, since the era was named after her and everything, was one of the most important widows of the day. Her husband, Prince Albert, died after a brief illness at the age of 42, which was even kind of young for that era. Queen Victoria wore full mourning attire for the rest of her life, and she lived another 40 years. She wore Whitby Jet throughout those decades. In fact, because she was queen, you know, she ordered that only mourning jewelry was allowed to be worn at court. That rule held for around 20 years after Albert's death. And because of Jet's Victorian significance relating to life and death, it was also commonly used for crosses and rosaries. You didn't have to be widowed and pious to wear Jet. Fashionable flappers from the 1920s wore long Jet necklaces too. And when I say long, I mean long. They sometimes went to the wearer's waist the beaded necklaces, in addition to looking great, were actually pretty practical. Jet is a lightweight gemstone, and that's a pretty handy feature when you're draping hundreds of beads around your neck. Most of the jet jewelry you'll find these days are antiques. It's not really used for decorative objects anymore. 
In the Victorian era, there were glass and even rubber imitations. In modern age, jet black jewelry is made from glass, plastic, and even black cubic zirconia. But if you ever find yourself in the north of England, head to Whitby and indulge in a little beach combing. Sir, what? Are we being too literal? Have you ever used an ancient jet talisman to ward off the evil eye? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information on jet and gemstones, check out the links below. Thank you for watching.